my topic is pregame prayer and the issues that arise from that in high school and collegiate settings. And the case that I examined in relation to this issue was uh, Kennedy versus Birmingham School District. I'll get into that in a second. So what pregame prayer in a general sense encompasses is either any, any type of prayer before, during, or after a sporting event that is led by athletes, coaches, members of the training staff, anything of that nature, anybody that is an employee of the school district or an athlete. And the, the issues that arise from that can be violations of First Amendment rights on the part of the students that religion is being forced upon them, and also their freedom of religion. They're allowed to practice whatever religion they may want, and if another religion is being forced on them, then they're in violation. They, their rights are being violated. So, uh, to explain this issue, I'm going to basically break break this video up into three parts. Um, the first part is going to be the introduction uh, of the issue of pregame prayer and everything that it entails. The second part is going to be my explanation and analysis of the case, Kennedy versus Burlington School District. And the third part is going to be a short interview with one of my teammates here on his beliefs and what he thinks about not only pregame prayer in general, but the ruling made in the Kennedy versus Burlington School District case. Part one, pregame prayer is any type of prayer that happens pre or post game in an athletic event that is sanctioned or not sanctioned by the school or its administrators or coaching staff or its athletes. It's a very encompassing definition of something and that's why it's such an important issue that has been argued very often and frequently throughout the country, all of the United States, in colleges and high schools. The case I chose to research, Kennedy versus Burlington School District, involves uh, Coach Joseph Kennedy, the assistant coach of the uh, Burlington High School football team, and the school district that uh, was his employer. The issues aro that arose from this were basically that Coach Kennedy, at the beginning of the year, was praying by himself and was approached by a few players to pray with him. And then that grew into the whole team praying before the game in the locker room and on the field after the game. This was brought to the attention of the school board and they decided that he was in violation of not only the contract that he signed as one of their employees, but also of the rights of the student athletes that he was forcing, or so they thought, to pray before and after the games. So basically, uh, he was in violation of school's policy, so he was fired, relieved of his duties as assistant coach, and basically said that he was violating their students' First Amendment rights, and his prayers were forced, and that athletes felt ostracized when being forced to participate in those activities, and that the prayers, even in his absence, did not continue, which further validated the fact that it was implied that you must attend his prayer session before and after the game. I feel as if that the court definitely upheld the precedent set by previous cases in regard to this issue, and that while the coach had grounds and his own moral reasonings for filing his injunction, that the court upheld the correct decision in the fact that he was not in the right by basically forcing players or even though he said he wasn't, making sure the players were there and that they weren't, they were ostracized kind of or felt left out from something on the team. And that that the country that we live in today is such a diverse place and that the rights that were given to us by our founding fathers are so important. And the First Amendment is the government will not establish any set religion. And it's part of, that's one big part of it. And he wrote that first for a reason and that it is the court's duty to uphold that, no matter what the personal feelings or moral code that the courts have. So, I'm here with Lane. Uh, we have three questions for him regarding uh, the issues that pregame prayer brings up. So my first question is, Lane, have you, like, what are your thoughts and feelings on pregame prayer, either as an individual or led by your coaches or members of your coaching staff? Uh, I'm all for it. Um, I don't have anything kind of Short disclaimer, I'm not sure how this video 
was taken or anything. Um, I'm the first person to go. And so hopefully this can establish a guideline of what to do or what not to do. I'm not really sure. But I hope overall that I was able to inform you in a fun and creative way today about the issue of pregame prayer, what it entails, and the many different court rulings and decisions and the reasons why those decisions were made about pregame.